and welcome to 252 Theater Online. Oh my goodness, it is a good day to be watching this video. We're gonna have a great time. I I've loved the big idea that we've been talking about all summer long. It has been a big idea, not just for you, but man, this has been a big idea that Mr. Cody needs too. And of course, we are talking about confidence. Confidence, simply put, is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. And uh, this is our last week, actually, to be talking about confidence. And we've got a great story about how nothing can separate you from God's love. But uh, first, you know, we've been adding to our playlist. Our theme has been press play, get in the mix. And it's been really fun. We've been having all these different musical ways to help us learn how to be confident. Well, uh, I took it to the next level and I had this bad boy installed on our theater stage. Check it out, pretty cool, right? It's, a, it's a, a working floor piano. See, watch this. Huh? Pretty cool, right? So, uh, listen, I thought we could have a little bit of fun with this because uh, I think Miss Alicia would like to play the piano, and I've got, um, well, let's just say a couple tricks up my sleeve that we'll have some fun. So uh, let me get her out here, and we'll, we'll do this. Hey, um, Miss Alicia, can you please uh, come out to the stage for a minute while we're recording? I'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Cody! <laughs> Mr. Cody? Whoa! Check out this piano! Wait, is this like on the floor? This is so cool. I wonder if it works. <gasps> oh my! It does work. Okay, let's try it again. <gasps> Whoa! Okay, going up and going down. <gasps> This is so amazing and also very huge and unexpected. <sighs> Three years of piano training is definitely gonna pay off on this bad boy. Okay, let's try it out. Um going there, right? You thought it was really you playing this thing? That was you? <laughs> oh, 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 guilty. I downloaded a little iPad app. It's amazing what you can do with these things. See, it can make it sound like it's playing anything. What? But hey, that was some nice tap dancing there. <laughs> really good. Let's turn that off. Yeah. You really had me full. I thought that was me. I was very confident well, I was playing this. Hey, Alicia, I remember last week when you got me with the whole, oh yes, I've got somebody here. Oh, surprise, it's you, Mr. Cody. I just thought I could give a little bit of fun and That's you know. true. I that that you make a good point there. Okay. I did do that. But <laughs> Mr. Cody, you made me look like a fool in front of everybody. Well, I mean, I'm I'm sorry that I used the app to make you think you're doing I mean it does it does really actually work, you know? I mean if I ever needed somebody to play a floor sized giant piano, you'd be somewhere on the list, I'm <gasps> sure. How dare you, Mr. Cody? Consider yourself shunned. Shunned? Like you're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna talk to me? You're not gonna say anything? Mr. Chris not. in the back, tell tell Cody I'm not talking to him. Oh, really? Tell Chris, him he's Chris, don't shunned. don't give in to this. Okay, this this is ridiculous. Alicia, this is being ridiculous, okay? <gasps> All we did was have a little bit of fun with an app, okay? And you're oh. cutting me off for this? Okay. Um I'm sorry everybody, I didn't realize. <laughs> Was gonna go this route today. Um, look, Alicia, I, I'm very sorry. Okay, I didn't mean to make you look like a fool in front of everybody. I thought you looked awesome doing and dancing on the piano like a ballerina. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chris, you can tell Cody that he I forgive him and that I don't shun him anymore. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Although <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. You could just talk to me. I'm I'm just right here. <laughs> ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh no! Oh no! How dare you, Mr. Cody? Okay. Re-shunned! I'm oh, leaving. My okay. Um, 
Well, I'm going to go try to make things right with her. But hey, you know what? Our story today is about how there is nothing that can separate us from God's love. So uh, let's get ready for that. Alicia, listen, it's just a piano. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Well, everybody, we have got a great verse to look at out of the book of Romans today. And this verse was actually written by the same person who wrote our our story last week, and that is Paul. Now, Paul is writing a letter again, and this time he's writing a letter to the church and the believers that lived in Rome. And of course, they were called... Romans. Yes. Now, at this point in Paul's life, uh, Paul hadn't visited Rome yet, but he was writing to them to tell them the basics of what it means to believe in Jesus. And so what he wrote is really amazing and it's really important for us to hear. So I'm excited that I get to read this to you. If you want to follow along at home, if you have a Bible or an app on your phone that you want to read along with, it's Romans 8:38 38 and 39. And this is what it says. It says, I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future, or any powers can separate us. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Wow, did you guys catch that? The big thing that this verse is saying is that there is nothing, there's nothing that can separate us from God's love. There's nothing too big, there's nothing too wide, there's nothing too tall, there's nothing too deep. There is nothing that can separate us from God's love. God always loves us. And that's a really, really incredible thing to know. Because the truth is, in our life, things don't always go according to plan. As a matter of fact, sometimes things can seem pretty chaotic. And you know, sometimes life just doesn't even make sense. Sometimes it's things that happen to us that make us question, does God really love me? But sometimes we make really unwise choices. We make unwise choices that really are sin, things that disobey God. And with those come consequences. And it kind of feels like this. So let's say, for example, that you uh, borrowed something from your brother, right? And before you could give it back to them, you broke it. You broke the thing that they borrowed from you. And you feel awful because it was, it was like their favorite thing. And oh man, it was just awesome. They loved it and they trusted you and you broke it. You feel awful about that, right? Or maybe let's say that you're watching funny videos on YouTube and you see something come up that you've never seen before and you know that you shouldn't watch it, your mom wouldn't want you to watch it, but you decide, I just want to see what it is. And then after it's over, you wish, well, you wish that you didn't see it because it was unwise and you realize you saw something that you probably shouldn't have done, right? So uh, I saw it or maybe... There's some kids that are in your neighborhood and you're having a good time and you're talking and you know all of a sudden they start making fun of somebody else. And you don't know what to do. This is awkward. I mean, you don't want to be left out of the group. So you laugh along with them. And ultimately, what do you do? You make fun of them too. What are all these things doing? It feels like they're building a wall. I mean, can you think of some other things that that you might have done that have felt this way that made you just feel awful afterwards? Like, for example, when you lose your temper. Oh, man, I hate when I lose my temper. Uh, I always feel awful after I do that. Or you know what? I bet you probably thought of this when I said it. I, I lied. Whew, man, anytime you feel a lie and you know that's not right, but you you do it anyway. Oh, man. That's hard. And so it it feels like this wall is coming up. Can you think of some other things that feel like this wall is coming up? Like maybe, um, maybe it's that you said some mean things, right? And you wish that you could take them back, but words hurt. 
and you didn't treat somebody the way that you want that you would want to be treated or maybe somebody else got a brand new Nintendo Switch and you got so upset because you didn't have one and you started to feel really jealous oh man jealous is jealousy is not a good feeling or when you're at the store and you want something but you don't have the money and you just you just take it oh man that one's that's a hard one too or you know i i I think this is probably one of the hardest things is when you look at all these things, it's hard to build this wall. As we look at that, it makes us really sad. And you might see all the things that we've done wrong and you might feel like I failed, right? And there's just more shame that's on here. And the worst of all, when we get to this point, we feel like I'm not good enough for God's love. I'm not good enough for God's love. That's how we feel sometimes. And we get this wall and it it feels, it feels like there's something separating us from God's love, right? I mean, look at this wall. But do you remember what the book of Romans said? What Paul said in Romans chapter eight, verse 38. I'm absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any powers can separate us. And it goes on to say this, not even the highest places or the lowest or anything in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. So it might feel like we are far from God because we have these things. But what did that verse just say? Nothing can separate us from God's love. Why? Why is God's love so good that we don't have to be separated from him? Get this. It's all because of Jesus. Jesus came. He was God. He lived on this earth, and he was perfect. He never did anything that you could put on this wall. He had a perfect relationship with God because he was God, right? And Jesus laid his life down. He died on a cross, And the way God looks at it, when he died on that cross, he took the punishment that we deserved and he made a way for us to be forgiven. That is the good news. Jesus made a way to forgive us of all these things. Now, that doesn't mean that they just are, that God doesn't see them or uh, God looks past, past them and doesn't see the wrong things that we've done. But here's what it does mean. It means if you put your trust in Jesus, that God can blow up the things that are in between you. God will never stop loving you. Isn't that incredible news? So when we think about the power that God's love has, because Jesus died on the cross for us, matter of fact, Romans uh, 5, 8 says this. It says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That means even with all this junk right here, God loved you so much that he still gave up his life for you. So let's take a look at what God's love might look like. How could God's love play out with these things that feel like they're separating us from God? All right, when I count to three, we're gonna do a drum roll and once and for all, we're gonna see (laughs) just what God's love can do, okay? Are you guys ready? Oh man, this is gonna be so exciting. One, two, Three! (laughs) You see, boys and girls, that is what God's love does. God loves you so much. And there's nothing that you could ever do that would make God stop loving you. But you do have a choice to make. You can choose to put your trust in him. When you do that, Jesus forgives you of all the wrong things that you've ever done. And it gives you a chance to have a close relationship with God that nothing ever, 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 ever can be taken away from you. That is great news. Here's what our bottom line is for today. God loves you no matter what. Isn't that good news to know that if I were to say, think about the things that were on your wall, I I bet some things would come to mind. I know there's certainly some things that came to mind. But the good news is, Even in spite of those things, God loves you and he wants to forgive you. All you have to do is ask. And that gives you the kind of confidence that you need to face this life, to realize no matter what circumstance you walk through, no matter what choices you make, God still loves you. 
and he's there for you and he wants you to make wise choices, to trust him even in times when it's hard and to treat others the way that you wanna be treated. When you realize that God loves you no matter what, it gives you a confidence that you can face anything. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for your unending love. It's perfect. You are perfect. And I pray for every kid who's watching this video right now. I pray that you will help them to put their trust in you so they can know what it means to have a relationship with you and to not have to feel shame by the things that we feel like separate us from you. Because God, you're strong enough that you can take all those things down and you can forgive us. And we're so thankful that you sent Jesus to make a way for us to have a relationship with you. Help us to realize that you love us no matter what. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love.